In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, cause of our joy, Saint Joseph, Saint Philip Neri, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Philip Neri, who we celebrate today, is a contemporary of the saint that we celebrated last week, Saint Felix of Cantalice. Saint Philip is come, sometimes he's known more popularly as the saint of mirth, or because he was very joyful. He had this kind of a, a good sense of humor. He liked to play jokes on himself or, you know, and, and like to uh, be joyful. Matter of fact, he had a quote in one of his spiritual maxims is that a joyful heart is more easily made perfect than one that is cast down. So that joy is very important in the spiritual life. It's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We know that we are, that the Holy Spirit is with us if we are joyful. You know, even St. Teresa of Avila said, Lord, spare me of gloomy saints. You know, if we're a saint and we have a gloomy face, then we're probably not a saint. We're not, we're not right where we need to be yet. We still have something more that we need to be doing. And that is um, rejoicing in the Lord, as St. Paul says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. But what is this joy that we're talking about it's joy in the Lord, as the reading from the Office of Readings today said, not joy in the world, although the two may have some aspect. You know, even our Lord gave us the example of, you know, two examples of joy. You might say the woman who's giving in labor, she's in quite distress, but when she gives birth to her child, the joy of giving birth to the child kind of erases all of that trial and tribulation that preceded it. Or the woman who lost that, you know, that important coin and she swept the whole house, searched high and low until finally she found it, you know, that she was filled with joy. So we can relate to that. You know, maybe you've had some big trial or tribulation and you've been, all of a sudden it has been taken away. Either it has been resolved or somehow, you know, that trial or tribulation or suffering that you were enduring was lifted or you were in searching of something, like the woman, you know, and you, something very important, and you finally found it. And just the fact that you possess that which you were looking for fills you with joy. That the joy of the Lord, this joy that comes as a fruit of the Holy Spirit, is that we possess God. That when we are in the state of grace, when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, we possess that greatest treasure that we can possibly ever have. Because with that grace of God comes the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, in a certain sense, already by baptism, possess heaven. That's the greatest possession we will ever have. It's the only possession really worth risking all for. That possession that we have of being in the state of grace, that possession of heaven is the greatest treasure. That that little you know, the treasure hidden in the field that the man found. He went and sold everything he had so he could have it. So that when you're like St. Philip Neri or the saints, you know, when you realize this great treasure that we have, that the world cannot take it away, you know, it, that it's something that God has given to us. And the only way that we can lose it, of course, is if through sin. So that that's why St. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. At the same time, he says, we work out our salvation in fear and trembling. So yes, we have this great possession of God's grace and we hold on to it and it should fill us with great joy, but at the same time, we need to be very prudent, very cautious, very protective of this great treasure and realize that in this world, it can be lost through sin. So therefore, our joy in this world has not, you know, is has this little has this little caution sign that says, you know, you have to be careful, you have to make use of all the means that God has given to you 
to keep this treasure until the day you can bring it, bring it finally uh, in its unscathed, you might say, and in its all of its glory back to heaven. That Jesus said in the gospel today that, you know, he rejoices because the Father's in him and he is in the Father and that he wants us to be with him as he is with the Father. That, and uh, this whole uh, oneness in the Lord that comes because of this communion, this fellowship that we have by grace is really the greatest treasure we have. And so today as we honor St. Philip Neri, you know, and we realize that all the trials and tribulations that we may undergo, whether they be physical or being imprisoned or even being tortured for the sake of and the love of Christ, no one can take that great treasure from us, the state of grace. Uh, if we, uh, you know, no one can take it away from us unless we surrender it. Uh, but God is giving us the grace and the strength to, to be joyful in all things. Just as the early martyrs or those great saints were joyful even under the greatest uh, trials and tribulations, they realized that that, that joy that comes from the Lord uh, cannot be taken away uh, by just mere uh, uh, events that are uh, they're not more powerful than God's grace. That's what gave those saints the courage, the strength, and the joy, even in the midst of trials, that uh, they uh, realize that all these things that we experience in this world are passing away. That that thing that remains is this fellowship, this communion that we have with Christ, and that it will be rewarded at the last day. And you might say then the greatest consolation we have is this faith of ours. And so we need to always be mindful of that and call these truths to mind when we are under, you might say, under the gun or under pressure or under some kind of tribulation. We need to call to mind these truths of the faith that our Lord has uh, you know, said that you know, he has overcome the world. So don't, don't um, be disturbed. Um, realize that you will have to undergo trial and tribulation, but in the end, he has already triumphed and we will triumph to the degree that we remain faithful and have confidence and trust in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.